Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Annie and I share all sorts of fun crochet stuff on my channel, so you should definitely subscribe. Today, I'm gonna be walking you through how exactly I make my hexagon cardigans. It seems like everyone has a slightly different way that they like to make their own, so I'm just gonna be sharing my personal favorite way to make them with you. This video has come very highly requested, so I really hope you enjoy this one. I truly have poured my heart and soul into this, and yeah, I just really hope you like it. Really quickly before we get into it, I just want to mention I will have all the timestamps in the description. So if you're looking for a specific part of the tutorial, whether it's the ribbing or the decrease of the sleeves, I will have it all linked there so you can just quickly move to exactly what you are looking for. And as always, if you have any questions on this tutorial, you can leave them in the comments and I try to respond to everyone. I know we have a lot of very kind hearted crocheters in our community who also would be happy to help. So I'm sure you will get the help you are looking for in that comment whether it's from me or somebody else. And with that, I think we're ready to go ahead and get started. So grab yourself a warm drink, some fuzzy socks and a blanket, and let's get working on our hexagon cardigan. So let's start with a quick overview of everything you're gonna need to make your hexagon cardigan today. So first things first, let's talk about some yarn. I am using three different colors today of the Lion Brand Heartland yarn. And so these are the ones that I've chosen and you'll see that I am going to be working in sort of a gradient. So you're welcome to use any colors that you'd like. These are just my personal preference. I know these hold up really well in the wash. Another great one is Karen Simply Soft. That's the one I made my previous cardigan with. So I'm going to be using three skeins of this color right here. This is the Sequoia colorway. And the reason I'm using three is because this is also going to be making up the ribbing of my project. And for these other two colors, I'm going to be using two skeins. This is roughly going to equate to a size medium, but you'll be able to adjust as needed for your own size. So now let's cover some of the other notions that we are going to need. Okay, so first off, we're gonna need a tape measure, which we're gonna be using in just a second here. Next, we're we're going to need some scissors. These are the ones I'm using today. I'm also going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook. This is the Tulip Edamo Red. I really love this one. You're gonna have to ignore these scratches on my hands. I just got a cat, so apologize for that. And then last but not least, we're also going to be using a tapestry needle. And these are the only supplies that we are going to need aside from some yarn. So now let's go ahead and talk about how you're gonna calculate the sizing of your hexagon cardigan. So to get these measurements, I recommend and grabbing a sweatshirt or a cardigan that you really love the fit of and we're going to be using that to base our measurements for this cardigan we are working today. So I happen to be using a crocheted cardigan for my measurements today, but you can use absolutely any cardigan or sweatshirt that you love the fit of. So there's only a few measurements that we absolutely need from this cardigan. The most important is going to be this one right here. You're going to start from the shoulder and measure the length of the sleeve opening here. And we wanna make sure that we are getting about the same for our hexagon cardigan we're going to be working. So make sure that you get this measurement and you write it down. Down. As you can see here, mine is just about eight inches. So I'm gonna wanna remember that when I am working the hexagons today. There's a few other measurements that will come in handy. One of those is taking a measurement of the cuff, just like so. As you can see here, that's about four inches. So that is important for me to write down. Those are the two main measurements we are going to need for our cardigan today. There are a few other helpful ones like getting the length of your cardigan if you like that length and you want your hexagon cardigan to be a similar length. I also would recommend getting the width of the entire cardigan, but we will be trying the hexagon cardigan as we go. So you'll be able to see if you like the fit, if you need to add or take away some stitches. And with that, I think we're ready to go ahead and get started on our cardigan, which is so exciting. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to be starting with what I'm referring to as our main color. This is going to be the color that we have the most of because we're going to be using it for the ribbing and all of that. I'll show you an example really quick. This is my other panel that is almost finished. And as you can see here, we started with this main color in the middle and it is carried out through here. And now this is what the top of our sleeve is looking like because we are using that main color to join everything up. And we will be using that color to make the ribbing 
shading as well. So you can use any color that you'd like. I like doing mine in a gradient as you can see here. I start from the darkest to the lightest and repeat this pattern throughout. So that is just what I will be doing today. But we're going to start with that color. So we're going to be starting this project with a magic ring. I do have a more in-depth tutorial on this. You're going to have to bear with me because it is my very first video. But I'll give you a quick overview of how I make my magic ring. I sort of just wrap it around my fingers like this and around the back I make an X. Everyone has a slightly different way of doing it. This is just how I prefer to do it. Um, and then you're going to insert your hook underneath this first piece of yarn and pull through just like this. And now we sort of have a little loop and a circle and I am going to chain three. So there's one, two, and three. So this will be acting as our first double crochet. So now at this point, I need to work two more to create one cluster. So as you can see here, I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into that circle. I'm going to pull up a loop for a total of three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. And so this is our first real double crochet stitch right here. And each cluster is made up of three double crochets. So to complete the cluster, I'm going to work one more double crochet. If you need some extra help with a double crochet stitch, you can definitely slow down this video to get a better look at how I'm working these, or you can check out a tutorial on YouTube for those as well. This tutorial is going to assume that you know the basic crochet stitches, but feel free to work along even if you are a beginner and refer to some other YouTube videos for more in-depth explanations of everything. So now we have our first double crochet cluster. This chain three acts as one double crochet and then the two other ones. And at this point, I like to chain two. I know a lot of people will chain one, but personally I just like the way that the chain two looks a little bit better. And now we're just going to repeat that process. We're going to double crochet three more into that magic ring. So here's one, two, and three. And I'm just going to chain two again. And you can kind of pull this magic ring shut a little bit as you go, but you definitely want to make sure you have room to work in there. So now we're going to work another double crochet cluster. So there's one, two, and three. And so at this point, we are halfway done with round one. Hence the name hexagon cardigan. We are going to be using a six sided granny square essentially. So we already have three and now we just need to work three more. So we're going to chain two and we're going to work our three double crochet. And we're just going to repeat this two more times now. See, we have one, two, three, four. So we're going to chain two, work our three double crochet, and do that once more. Sorry if you hear my yarn squeaking. Okay, chain two. So now we just need to work our three double crochet one more time. So here's one, two, and three. And then to finish off this round, we're just going to chain two. And the last thing we need to do is pull this end of the magic ring to shut it. So just like that, give it a nice tug. And then we're going to slip stitch right here into that first double crochet stitch. And this is what the end of round one looks like. It might look like a little bit of a mess, but as we keep working, it's definitely going to be more obvious that it's a hexagon. At this point, I would recommend that you weave in your ends very securely because that's one mistake I've made with my hexagon cardigans in the past. If you do not secure this very well, it will come undone. And if this end comes undone, your whole cardigan comes undone, unfortunately. So to make sure that we have that nice and secure, we want to make sure that we are carrying the yarn through in several different directions, at least three. So as you can see here, I've gone one, two, and then I'd recommend even going back the other way as well. And basically you just want to keep going and make this as secure as possible because it is very important. All right, that's nice and secure. So I'm going to pull out these 
fancy scissors and I'm just gonna cut the yarn. And at this point, we are ready to move on to round two. And to do that, we're gonna start by chaining three and we're going to be working into this space as you can see right here. And to do that, I'm going to insert two double crochet stitches. So there's one and two. So we have our first cluster of round two. And to work the next one, we're going to skip over these three and we're going to be working into this next space right here. So to do that, we're gonna yarn over and put our three double crochet clusters here. And since this is a corner, what we're going to do next is chain two and we're going to work three more double crochet clusters right here. And essentially when we're doing this, we are adding the increases to each round so that it allows the hexagon to get bigger and bigger. Since we are working in all the corners, we're going to be doing a three double crochet cluster, chain two, three double crochet cluster in each corner. So as you can see here, I've completed two of those and now we're gonna move on to the next corner space and we're going to double crochet three, two, three, chain two, double crochet three, one, two, and three. And as you can see here at this point, I just have to work into this corner space and this corner space, and then we're gonna finish off the round in this last one here. So now that I've worked that three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into each corner stitch, I am back at that first corner. And as you can see, we only have one set of three double crochet here. So next what we're gonna do is double crochet three, and chain two. And since we already have that set of three double crochet, at this point, we're just gonna slip stitch into that first set of double crochet. And that is the end of round two. At this point, I'm choosing to change my color to create that gradient effect. So what I'm gonna do is cut my yarn and I'm going to be switching to the next color in my gradient, which is the super pretty shade of Line Brand Heartland in the color Mammoth Cave. So let's go ahead and change over to that. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding the new color into the corner I just ended on. As you can see here, I'm gonna insert my hook in between each double crochet cluster. So right into this corner space. And I am just going to pull up a loop of that new color, just like this pull up a loop and all I'm gonna do now is tie a knot here and now it's attached. I find that this is the most secure way to attach a new color of yarn. And then all I'm gonna do now is insert my hook just as I normally would and I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop and we have a new color attached. So I have that first chain on my hook so all I have to do is chain the second two. This is acting as our first double crochet so now all I have to do is double crochet two in this corner space. You'll also want to make sure that you're holding both of the ends of yarn against your work just to prevent you from having to weave in any more ends. It just makes things a little bit cleaner. So you'll notice here that this space is not a corner space. And as we continue working, we're going to have more and more of these spaces. And all we're going to do is work a double crochet cluster into these spaces. So there's one, two, three double crochet. And as you can see here, I'm holding my yarn behind my work. So it is kind of weaving in my ends as I go for me, which is super handy. So now we're back at one of these corner spaces and we're going to be working these just like we did in the previous round. So we're gonna double crochet three, chain two and double crochet three. So there's our corner. And as you can see, the more we're working it, the more defined it's starting to look. So now throughout the rest of the round, we're gonna repeat this process of working a double crochet three into the space here and then working a double crochet three 
chain two, double crochet three into each of the corner spaces. And as we continue working these rounds, you'll notice that the amount of spaces in between each corner will grow, and that's because of the increase that we are working into each corner. So for example, in round four, we will have two of these spaces in between each corner. It's also worth mentioning that I'm choosing to work my color gradient in rounds of two. So for example, the first two rounds are in the color Sequoia and the next two rounds are going to be in this color Mammoth Cave and so on. But of course, you're welcome to change the colors as much or as little as you would like. This is just the effect that I really enjoy. I love the gradient look that it gives these cardigans. Okay, so we're almost done with round three. The last thing I have to do is work double crochet three and chain two and slip stitch into that first stitch and we will be ready to move on to round four. So there's one, two, and three. Chain two, since this is a corner, and slip stitch back here. And don't forget, if at any point you feel like I'm working too fast for you, YouTube has a feature where you can speed up or slow down the speed of the video. So you can toggle that feature in the bottom right corner of the video and choose the perfect speed for you. So for round four, we're essentially going to be doing the same thing. We're going to chain three. We're going to put our two double crochets into that corner for a total of three and now we have our cluster into that corner and as you'll see here we're going to do three double crochet three double crochet and then we're going to work that corner just the same as we have been so we're going to do our cluster of three into that first space and then in the next space we're going to do another one so one two oops and three and then we're just going to work this corner stitch the same way we have been. So three double crochet, two and three, chain two and three double crochet. And we're just going to keep repeating this pattern until we get the size and measurements that we want. As I mentioned before, in round four, we have two of these double crochet clusters in between each corner stitch. And as we continue working, it will increase. So for example, the next round will have three of these in between the corners and then four and five. And we're just gonna keep doing exactly what we are doing now. The nice thing about hexagon cardigans is they're so customizable. You can really use any type of yarn you want and it's really easy to adjust the measurements so that it fits perfectly for you because really all we're doing is chaining and double crocheting. So it doesn't get much better than that if you ask me. We're almost done with round four and then we're gonna change to our next color since this is our second round of using this Mammoth Cave colorway. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but if you have any questions at all throughout this tutorial, drop them in the comments and I will try to respond to every single one of them as best as I can. I know we have a super awesome community here too where there are lots of crocheters who love to help. So as you can see here, I'm really starting to fall into my rhythm with this project, which is one of the things I just adore about hexagon cardigans is after a while, they really become mindless because you're just repeating the same thing over and over again. And if you're new to hexagon cardigans, don't worry if you don't feel that way at this point yet. I do promise you though, after a certain point, you will start to feel this way and they just become such an easy and relaxing project. They really are my go-to for when I I just want to relax and unwind and crochet while I'm watching a movie or that sort of thing. So as you can see here, I'm done with round four and it's definitely becoming more obvious that we have that hexagon shape. And really quick, I'm just gonna show you how exactly this turns into a cardigan because if you've never made one of these, I'm sure at this point you're like, Annie, how is this a cardigan? So I'm gonna show you. I turned mine backwards so that the front side is facing out, but essentially you take this corner and you fold it to this one and it might not be obvious immediately but as you can see here this is going to be our sleeve and then this is the body and as we continue working out we start creating a much larger piece and from there 
we're gonna start to work the sleeve out and then we're gonna add some decreases to our sleeve because personally I really like the way that a decreased cinch sleeve looks so I'm gonna show you how to do that then we're gonna add the ribbing there we're gonna be joining the other panel here and we're gonna have a really cute really awesome cardigan but in order to do that we obviously have to keep working so let's not get too ahead of ourselves here I'm just going to tie off on our mammoth cave color because it is time for our third and final color of the cardigan and now we're switching to another beautiful color of line brand heartland this color is called grand canyon i absolutely love this it's so pretty and i just love these three together to join this i'm just going to be doing the exact same thing that i have done for the previous color changes i'm inserting my hook into the last corner that i worked i am pulling my yarn through i am tying a tight knot to keep everything nice and secure and from here, we just continue on as we have. So I am going to chain three, which acts as my first double crochet. I am going to work two more double crochet. And really quick, as I mentioned before, you'll see now we're going to be working three clusters where in the previous round we had two. So that's how you know things are expanding here. So we have one, two, three, corner, one, two, three, corner, if that makes sense. And we're just gonna keep carrying on. And at this point, you should be feeling pretty comfortable with the pattern of making the hexagon and changing colors and all of that sort of thing. And from this point on out, we're just gonna carry on doing exactly this until you reach the measurements that align with the cardigan that we measured at the beginning. And just for reference, I'm using a worsted weight yarn, a five millimeter hook. My bust is 32 and I'm about five, six, and I am doing 20 rounds of the hexagon. And that will make up the body and the armhole length for my cardigan. And it seems to fit me pretty well. So that is just for some reference, because I know whenever I'm following a tutorial, I always appreciate knowing the size that the maker is wearing because it can kind of help me gauge a little bit for my own. All right, so that completes round five. And at this point, I'm just gonna work one more round in this color. And we're just gonna keep repeating this pattern of switching the color every two rounds. As I mentioned earlier, I'm working 20 rounds of the hexagon until I reach my desired measurements. So I'm going to complete those remaining 15 and meet back up with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and work those rounds off camera. And in the meantime, I hope you are having fun and enjoying some crochet time because really that's what this is all about so don't forget that we are having fun here we can't take ourselves too seriously mistakes are welcomed and okay it's all part of the learning process so don't forget to have fun because that's the most important part okay so i am back with the first half of my cardigan i have my 20 rounds completed this number might be more or less for you depending on the size you're making and the yarn that you are using i'm going to show you really quickly how you can determine if you have reached your desired measurements and to do that we need to fold the cardigan up as if it would be worn so to do that i'm going to grab these two corners that are next to each other and fold them against each other and this is going to be our sleeve width as we're folding it should begin to form an l shape as you can see here i apologize i'm not able to fit the entire thing in the frame but as you can see here this is going to be our sleeve and this is the body portion and at this point you can kind of start to try it on and see how it's fitting you so this is what will become the sleeve and you might remember at the beginning of the video we took some measurements from a different cardigan or sweater that you enjoy and now we just want to make sure that the arm width of our cardigan is matching roughly the same as the measurement that we got from the other cardigan we're basing this off of so mine was roughly eight inches from my previous cardigan and as you can see here i'm just a tad over which i actually want i want it to be a little bit larger than the one that i had previously shown at the beginning so this is a great stopping point for me and at this point i am ready to start joining up this first side and extending these sleeves out and adding the cuffs so i'm gonna walk you through how exactly i do that now it's also worth mentioning another reason why i went a little bit over the measurements of my other cardigan is because i wanted to carry this pattern to keep things even because again as i mentioned earlier my goal is to have this be sort of the contrasting color that i carry throughout the ribbing and things like that and i know if i have this right here it's going 
going to appear that way, if that makes sense. So essentially right here, this is going to be our shoulder and the outer portion of the arm. And so what we need to do here is start joining this up. And I'm going to show you how I do that to make it look super neat and flush. So now we're gonna be joining along this edge. You wanna make sure that the corner is down here. This is what will become the armpit, essentially. And we're going to be joining up this side. This should be open over here, just for reference to help you find what side you're going to be joining. And to do this, I'm gonna be using the color Sequoia because that's matching right here. And I just personally like the way that looks. So let's get started. So I'm gonna be starting in this corner here to join this up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert my hook through both of the corners and I'm going to pull my yarn through tie a knot and we are secured and ready to get started. And so now that that's joined, I'm going to chain three and through this first side here, I'm going to double crochet two since that first chain three acts as our double crochet. And what I'm gonna do here is insert my hook into that back corner space that we tied the knot through and we're only working through the back portion here. And I'm just going to make a slip stitch just like that. So essentially, we're just gonna be repeating this process down this one side of the cardigan. And so I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna work the double crochet cluster of three only into this front space. So one, two, and three. And I'm gonna find the corresponding space on the back side, which is right here. You wanna every once in a while kind of just hold them up together and make sure everything is aligning just to be sure. So now that I've found that back space right here, I'm gonna insert my hook around the back, pull the yarn through and just make a slip stitch to attach them. And you'll start to notice it makes this really nice flush join that blends in with the rest of the cardigan. I just prefer the way this looks. I think it's super nice. So double crochet three into that front space and slip stitch around the back of the corresponding back space. We'll do it one more time together. One, two, I apologize if there's any dog hair on here. It's kind of just unavoidable in my house, unfortunately. Um, and here we're going to slip stitch through the back of the corresponding stitch. And we're just going to continue this until we reach the end of this side. And now that we're at our last stitch, we're back into this corner. All I'm going to do is double crochet three here through the front side and come around the back just the same as we have been and slip stitch. And here is what it is looking like. I think it's just a really nice way to join up the sleeve since this part is facing out. This is essentially just the shoulder and the top of the arm and I just think it's a really good way to join things up. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and tie off here and we are ready to start working the sleeve. And so you might be able to see the cardigan start to take its shape at this point. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna continue my pattern that I've been carrying throughout the entire cardigan on this sleeve and we are going to start working that together right now. So I'm going to join with the next color in my pattern which is this, I think this is Mammoth Cave, this one, and I'm just going to be joining right here up at the top where this end is. So I'm going to insert right into this space where everything is all joined up. We're going to add the new yarn just like that. I'm going to tie it on there and we're going to start by chaining three. Since this acts as our first double crochet, I'm going to work two more double crochet into this space. And so you can see here that we are all joined up and ready to work into the round again. So I'm just going to keep doing what I was doing before essentially where I'm just working the double crochet cluster of three into each space around. And again, just like before, I'm going to be doing two rounds of each color. And while we're working these next few rounds, we won't be doing any decreases with the granny cluster stitch because I just find that it tends to look a little bit messy. It never looks quite right. So I just prefer carrying it down until I'm getting pretty close to the wrist. And at that point, 
we will just work some double crochets and decrease. You'll see what I mean in a second, but this is just how I prefer to do it. This would also be a good time to refer back to the measurements that we took earlier and double check that arm measurement. We're gonna wanna make sure that the arm measurement of our hexagon cardigan is pretty similar. And you'll wanna keep working these rounds of granny clusters until you have about four inches remaining for the total arm length because at that point, we're gonna start to decrease and add the cuff. So you can see here, I'm approaching the end of round one of the sleeve and I'm just gonna show you how I carry things on to round two in case you're a little bit confused. So this is the start of round one right here and all I'm gonna do to move on to round two is slip stitch into that first stitch and chain three, and then we're just gonna work two more double crochet into this space right here. And now we'll just repeat what we just did by working three double crochet into each space around. And at the end of this round is where I will be changing my color to the next lighter shade. So we're at the end of round two of the sleeve. So all I'm gonna do here is slip stitch. And because I'm changing my color, I'm going to grab my scissors and cut right there. And now I'm going to just pull that through to form a knot and I will attach my lightest color with a knot. And we are just going to double crochet three into each space around and when I'm done with these next two rounds, I'm also going to have to check the measurements of my sleeve to see if I should work two more rounds of the dark brown color before I start the decrease. So we will do that together when I finish up these next two rounds. So now that I have those two rounds done of the lightest color, I decided to try on my cardigan and I realized I am ready to start decreasing. You can see by the length here, I'm pretty happy with that. We still have about three inches of the sleeve to work with the decreasing and the ribbing, but it also works out perfectly because I wanted the gradient to end on that sequoia color, meaning that the ribbing and the decrease were both in that dark brown color and that is the next color of our sleeve. So we're we're going to go ahead and move into the decrease but feel free to keep working as many rounds as you would like your sleeves to be so now it's time to start working the decrease on our sleeve and i'm going to show you a little bit of an overview of how exactly i do this this is one of the older cardigans i made this is about a year old and you can tell it's very well loved and this is the same technique we're going to be using today so as you can see here i'm using this navy blue for both the decrease and the ribbing to repeat this pattern and and for my cardigan I'm working on today, that color is going to be this dark brown. And for this technique, I'm working four rounds of pure double crochet. So we're gonna be working double crochet into the top of each stitch. And every two stitches, I'm going to be working a double crochet decrease. And I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. So don't worry if you don't know how. And once we finish those four rounds of decrease, we're gonna start working our ribbing. And if you've never done this, don't worry. This is also just a double crochet. The only difference is we work into the front post and the back post in the double crochet. I will show you, so don't be worried if you've never done this, but this is just an overview of what we are about to do. So let's go ahead and work on our current cardigan. So this is where we have left things, and now all we're gonna do is start to cinch up this hole and make that ribbing. And to do that, I'm gonna be using my color Sequoia. And again, you can really use any color that you want. This is just how I like to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hook into a stitch. We will not be working into the spaces like we have for the majority of this cardigan. Now we will just be working into these spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie my yarn on and I am going to chain three and this will act as my first double crochet here. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to double crochet into this next stitch so now we're gonna work our double crochet decrease. And if you're making a different size than me, it's likely that you will have a different stitch count. So don't worry if you end up with a slightly different number of stitches than I do. But for this technique, I'm going to be working a decrease every two stitches. So we have our two here, we're gonna decrease two more decrease. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we do that. I'm gonna start by yarning over. I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch and we are going to yarn over and pull up a loop. 
for a total of three loops on our hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through those first two. And then I'm going to go ahead and yarn over once more and insert my hook into the next stitch. Now I have four loops on my hook. I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and pull through those first two. And then one more time, I'm going to yarn over and pull through those last three. And you'll notice here what we did is it looks like we worked two double crochet stitches, but if you look at the top, this is just one stitch. And so that is how we are going to decrease. And that decrease is what is going to make the sleeve get smaller in size. So for the remainder of this round, I'm going to work two regular double crochet. And now that I've worked those two regular stitches, I'm going to decrease again by yarning over, inserting my hook and pulling up the loop, pulling through the first two loops, yarning over, inserting my hook into the next stitch, pulling through those first two loops and pulling through the remaining three. If you need some extra help on the decrease, go ahead and rewind this video or slow down the speed if you need, but I'm just going to continue this pattern for the rest of this round. And since this tutorial is based off of measurements, it's inevitable that some of you might have an odd number of stitches left at the end. And if that happens, it is totally okay. You didn't do anything wrong. And you can just simply add an extra double crochet or two at the end and just keep repeating this around. All right, so here we are at the end of the first round of our decrease, and you can sort of start to see things cinching up a little bit here. I also just wanted to show you this though, because I also had an odd number of stitches going around just since this is made to measure, it's inevitable, it might happen. And so all I did is I just placed an extra double crochet here. And honestly, we will all be okay. It's totally fine if this happens to you as well. And you will see when I finish the cardigan, it's gonna be just fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to to round two of the decreases. So to do that, we're just going to slip stitch just like we have been and chain three. That's gonna act as our first double crochet. So I'm going to work one more for a total of two double crochet. And then this is where we're going to work our next decrease. We'll work two regular double crochet and two decreases, two regular double crochet and two decreases. I hope that if you're crocheting along with me, you are starting to find your groove with this pattern and you are enjoying yourself. I know sometimes when you're trying a new pattern, it can be tough at first and it can be hard to remember that it's supposed to be an enjoyable task. So that is my hope for you. And I just want to remind you, you know, we can't take any of this too seriously. This is all just for fun. And it's important that if you are crocheting, it's relaxing because really that's what it's all about. And I know it takes some time to get to that point, but I believe in you and I know you can do it. So as you're approaching the end of round two, you want to be really careful here because it can be kind of tricky to see where the round ends just since things are decreasing, but it's actually right here. As you can see, this is the first stitch that we started that chain three. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into there and chain three. And I'm also, just since there's a little bit of a hole here, I'm just going to put a double crochet right in there. This might happen a little bit just since we're decreasing. And here you can start to see things are getting even smaller, which is a great sign that we are getting closer to the size that we want the cuff to be. Round three is going to be worked no different than round one or two of decreasing. We are going to do two double crochet, decrease, two double crochet, decrease around until we get to the end. And I will meet back up with you at round four, where we are going to do the exact same thing of two double crochet decrease. I just feel like it's honestly the easiest way to work these sleeves. It's the easiest to explain and to remember. So you can't go wrong. All right, we are at the end of round three. So I'm going to go ahead and work another round doing the exact same thing we've been doing of two double crochet, one decrease, two double crochet, one decrease. And depending on your size or how big or small you'd like the cuffs of your sleeve to be, you can stop here. You can keep going for a couple more rounds. It's completely up to you. Just go ahead and try this on every once in a while. Make sure things are fitting the way you want them to. So I'm going to do exactly what I have been doing with you so far, where we're going to slip stitch into here and chain three, 
and then double crochet one and decrease so on and so forth so i will meet back up with you at the end of this round where i'm going to try it on see how things are fitting and go from there so as you can see here i've completed my four rounds of decreases and i'm all finished up with that fourth round so all i'm gonna do is chain three and now this is when we're gonna start working the ribbing but in order to do that we need to do one round of double crochet into the top of each stitch so that is all i'm gonna do here is in this next round i'm just going to double crochet around and then once this is done i will meet back up with you to walk you through the front post and back post double crochet stitch that we will be using to make our ribbing today all right so i just finished that round of double crochets as you can see here so now it's time to start working our front post back post double crochet and this is what is going to create our ribbing and this is actually a pretty easy stitch so don't be worried if you haven't tried this all i'm gonna do to start is i just slip stitched into the beginning of the round i'm going to chain three which acts as our first double crochet as usual and here is where we're going to work the front post back post i apologize my yarn is kind of dark so i will link other tutorials in the description as well but hopefully i can explain it to the best of my abilities for you so to make the front post double crochet we will not be working into the top of the stitch as we normally do we are going to yarn over and see this is what we're referring to as the post so all i'm going to do is insert my hook pull it through that post and work the double crochet as normal so we'll yarn over pull behind the post just like this yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and as you can see here it bumps that double crochet forward and when we combine this with the back post double crochet it creates a really nice ribbing effect that's super stretchy and comfy so now we're going to work the back post to do that i'm going to yarn over and here you can see this is my next post so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna be working through the back like this so I'm gonna put my hook around the back out through the front so it should be facing you and then you wrap it around the post just like that we're gonna yarn over pull it back through like that and pull it back through again yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so essentially these are the same stitch one is just worked into the front and one is worked into the back i'll show you a couple more times just in case you are new to this stitch and we will be repeating front post and back post throughout the rest of the round so now that we just worked the back post it is time for the front post so we're going to yarn over insert our hook behind the post yarn over pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Most people tend to feel like the front post is just a little bit more natural than the back post, so I'm gonna spend a little more time reviewing the back post with you now. So this is the post I'm gonna be working our next back post through. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna insert my hook through the back and around the back post just like this, and we're gonna pull it back through for a total of three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you can start to see that ribbing forming here. Now we're gonna go back for the front post and to do that, we're gonna yarn over, come through the front and around the post, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And so again, we're kind of just going in through the front and then alternating and going in through the back and everything else stays the same if you're still feeling a little bit of confusion up until this point you're more than welcome to slow down the video or check out some of those tutorials that i will have linked below for you and i'm just going to keep repeating this until i have finished the round so i've finished that first round of front post back post double crochet and you can see it's starting to form this really nice ribbing and all i'm gonna do is slip stitch again into that first stitch to start the next round and now we are going to be using the same stitch to create the rest of the ribbing until we reach the desired length for me i believe that's going to be about three rounds but it might be different for you and that is totally okay so i'm going to show you how the second round is going to look now that we have some of these stitches bumped outward or inward so as you can see here because this one is puffed out towards us this is a front post double crochet and since we can't really see this one right here that is a back post because as you can see here this one is popped out towards the back 
So we're going to be starting with that front post again, and all we're gonna do is yarn over, insert our hook behind the post just like this, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And this just extends that stitch upward. And we just wanna make sure we are repeating the front post and back post the same as the previous round so that we get this ribbing effect here. So as you can see here, this is a back post because it's not popped out towards us. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna insert my hook through the back and around that post, yarn over and pull back through yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're just going to keep doing this around. When you see a front post, you will work the front post, stitch, and back post. And just like the previous round, we should be alternating between front post, back post. So I'm just going to continue doing this around and I will meet back up with you for round three of our ribbing in just a second. So I've just finished round two of the ribbing and I tried the sleeve on to go ahead and show you. I'm super happy with the fit of this. I think I'm going to go ahead and work one more round of ribbing and then we will be done with the sleeve. So to work round three of the ribbing, it's going to be exactly the same as the previous two rounds it's just going to be the alternating front post and back post double crochet and if you'd like to do more than three rounds of ribbing you are more than welcome to you can just continue doing exactly what we have been doing for the last couple of rounds and you can make the ribbing as long or as short as you would like all right so now that i have reached my desired length of ribbing which was three rounds worth i'm ready to go ahead and tie off and finish my sleeve congratulations on finishing your first sleeve we only have one more to go so that's pretty exciting i'm gonna leave quite a bit of length on here before i cut it and we just want to make sure we very securely weave in our end so that everything stays nice when we wash it and all of that so i'm gonna go ahead and weave that in now we are all finished with this first side. So at this point, we are ready to go ahead and work the second hexagon. And we are just going to repeat exactly what we did one more time. And you should have a total of two of these. And once you do, we're gonna meet back up. And when we meet back up, we are going to join the back here. And then we are going to add some ribbing along the neckline and along the bottom. And it's gonna be super good. I know yours is gonna look amazing. So don't doubt yourself quite yet. All we have to do is do this one more time. So go ahead and rewind the video if you need some extra help working that second panel. And the comments are always open if you need anything in the meantime. So I will check back with you in a YouTube second. But for me, it's going to be a solid couple hours working that other side. <laughs> All right, so I am back with our two finished panels. As you can see here, this is that first panel, which of course has dog hair on it. Sorry about that. And our sleeve. And here is our second one. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start joining these two up. So now we're gonna lay them just like this with the sleeve facing out here. And then I'm going to take the other panel just like this and we have that sleeve facing this way. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple rows going down each side of the back just to give us a little bit more space. You're welcome to do as many or as few of these rows as you would like. It kind of just depends on if you would like a more oversized fit. I like to add one extra row down the back side of the panel on each side just to give it more of an opening in the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and work one row on either side and then we will join. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. I like to start at the bottom of the back panel because that will ensure that your clusters are being worked on the right side because if you start at the top, your clusters will be facing with the wrong side out. So I'm going to attach my yarn in chain three, double crochet two, and I'm just going to continue working my clusters into each space only along this side of the cardigan. We are not going to be turning or working any corners because we just want this to be on the back. So this panel is now done. We have that third row of the main color worked. So now we're gonna be doing almost the exact same thing for this panel, but since this is the mirrored version of this one, we're gonna be starting at the top on here so that way our right side is facing out. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing where I double crochet three in each space along this side. So starting from the top, I'm going to insert my yarn and tie a knot 
and work my first cluster. And if you do end up working with the wrong side of the stitch facing outward, it's honestly pretty unnoticeable. So it is totally fine if you do that, especially if you're making a larger size and you need to add a couple more rows. It's totally fine. You will not really notice at all. And if you're preferring more of an oversized fit, I would definitely consider working a couple extra of these rows in the back just to make it fit more comfortably. We are getting super close to being able to join up our panels here we just have to finish this one side and if you are following along for my size you should have three rows of the main color on each side of the back all right so i'm back into that last corner stitch so i'm just going to work my double crochet cluster chain one and tie off so as you can see here we have three rows of the main color on our back panel, and now we're going to work one more row as we join them together. So just like we did with the sleeves, we're gonna start on the bottom of the cardigan, and we're going to attach our yarn, and now I'm going to insert just through the first side, and I'm going to chain three, and work the two double crochet. And again, we're only working into the first side. And just like that sleeve, I'm going to insert my hook into the back side and slip stitch through. I'm going to work that double crochet three cluster into the first panel and in the corresponding side of the second panel I'm going to insert my hook around the back and work a slip stitch and we're just going to repeat this up the back of the cardigan working a double crochet cluster of three and slip stitching through the corresponding space on the other panel. So as you can see here, we're starting to join up the panels of the cardigan and we're just going to repeat this process until we reach the top of our cardigan or the opening right here. So I'm almost done joining the two panels on the back. I just have to work a couple more stitches and I'll show you how I do that. I'm just going to slip stitch back here and tie off. And there we have it. This is the back panel here. It's all joined up. So this is what the front of our cardigan is looking like here. We have this opening and the sleeves. And the last order of business is to work the ribbing around the neckline. And then once we do that, we will work along the bottom here and do that ribbing as well. So I figure we can just go ahead and start working on that neckline ribbing. So I'm gonna lay my cardigan open just like this. The sleeves are on either side up here. And we're gonna start in this bottom corner right here. So this ribbing is going to be exactly the same as what we did for our cuffs right here. We're just going to be carrying that throughout here. So all I'm gonna do for this first round is insert my hook and secure the yarn. And then I'm gonna chain three for my first double crochet. And essentially, I'm just going to be double crocheting in the top of each stitch here, all the way around the neckline. So we're gonna go up the side, we're gonna come around here and just try to get it as even as possible. We wanna try to make sure we're placing the stitches evenly, but not too close together, otherwise it might start to ripple. And so we're just gonna come back down that side. I'm going to continue working double crochets up the side here, and I'll show you what things look like when I start placing double crochets around the neck area. All right, so as you can see here, I'm getting closer to working that neckline, and you might be wondering where to place your double crochets because some of these stitches aren't as clear because of all the joining that we did. For example, right here, this is the top of the arm sleeve. So I'm just going to try to find a good place to put a double crochet where it's not too far apart from the rest of my stitches. Basically what I'm trying to do here is just keep uniformity across. As you can see here, there is a little bit of space and that is totally okay throughout my other stitches. And I wanna try to keep that same amount of space with everything else, just so they're not too far or too close together. So for example, I just found another space right here and put a double crochet there. And this isn't the top of the stitch either, but since that's the next area, I'm just going to go ahead and double crochet right in there. So I've turned the neckline toward me and I'm gonna start working this way. This is our back joining right here. And I'm going to try to just put a double crochet right here. 
It doesn't have to be perfect up here. We just want to try to keep them about the same distance apart. And that is the neckline. So I'm going to go ahead and work down the remainder of the other side. And I will meet back up with you for the second row of the neckline where we will start the ribbing. Here's my last stitch. Okay, so that first row of the neckline is complete. This is the top of the neck, and then these are the side panels. So now we're gonna start by working the ribbing, and we're gonna do exactly what we did when we worked the cuffs of the sleeve. So I'm gonna start by chaining three, and I'm going to turn the entire cardigan like this. Okay, so now that I've got everything rotated, I'm going to work a front post, back post, double crochet throughout the entire neckline. So we'll begin by working that front post double crochet and back and front and we will just keep repeating this throughout the entire rest of the neckline and if you're needing some extra help with this stitch i'll definitely link some resources in the description if you want a little bit of a more in-depth tutorial and i typically like to do one more row of this so a total of three rows but two rows of the front post back post because the first row we did was just pure double crochet but you're welcome to make the ribbing as long or as short as you would like so now i'm just going to continue working the front post back post double crochet around the entire row of our neckline ribbing and i will meet up with you at the end of this row okay so i'm just about done with row two of the neckline ribbing as you can see here and I am going to work one more row after this, but I'm just finishing it off and I'm going to show you how I do that. So my last stitch is a back post double crochet and I'm just going to chain three and turn my work back over. And since everything is all assembled, we kind of have to just take the whole thing and rotate it like this. All right, and now just like with the cuffs, we wanna make sure that we are keeping the same pattern. So this is a front post double crochet. And once more, I'm just going to repeat this around the neckline. And then I'm going to tie off and start working the ribbing along the bottom of the cardigan. So here's what things are looking like. Now that I'm getting close to the end of row three of our ribbing, I'm just working the last few stitches into the bottom right corner here. So now that I have completed the end of row three of our ribbing, I'm actually going to work some ribbing along the bottom of the cardigan. And in order to do that, I actually don't need to tie off. I'm just going to chain three once I'm done here. And we are going to rotate our work just like this. So this is the bottom of the cardigan right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just like with all the previous ribbing in this project, I'm just going to double crochet in each stitch across. I'm currently working on the right side panel along the bottom here, and we will go all the way around to the back of the cardigan like this and then back to the left side of the cardigan. And once we get there, we're gonna repeat exactly what we did here of working two rows of front post, back post, double crochet. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of my third row of ribbing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie off. And this completes our hexagon cardigan. So all that's left for us to do is weave in some of these ends. And personally, I like throwing mine in the wash before I wear it because it just helps relax the stitches a bit. But here we have it. I absolutely love how this turned out. Again, all I have to do is weave in the ends and we're done. So that concludes my hexagon cardigan tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed this one and I just wanted to say thank you for following along and watching this video. And if you're enjoying the content that I'm sharing here on my channel, definitely consider subscribing so you don't miss another video from me in the future. And that's all for me today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm wishing you the best and until next time friends, happy crocheting. Bye. Bye.